Today I'm going to take a quick look at the recently released Linux Lite 4.8. Linux Lite is an Ubuntu-based Linux distribution. It uses the XFCE desktop and as the name suggests, it is supposed to be a lightweight Linux distribution, so it's perfect for those of you running underpowered or older hardware. So let's check out the release announcement from distrowatch.com. You will see Linux Lite 4.8 was just released. This is a new stable version of the project's beginner-friendly Linux distribution based on Ubuntu 18.04. Now Ubuntu 18.04 is Ubuntu's last LTS release, so Linux Lite should be rock solid stable being based on Ubuntu LTS. Reading a little bit from the release announcement here from DistroWatch, quote, Our desktop is laid out just like it is in Windows with a start menu to the left and a tray to the right, with volume, network, and calendar options, and with familiar desktop icons. What that tells me is... Windows 7 just had its end of life a few days ago. I made a video about it a couple of days ago. If you're on Windows 7, your operating system is no longer supported. Maybe you don't want to go to Windows 10. Where do you want to go? Hey, I'm Linux Lite. Check us out. Because guess what? Our desktop environment looks just like what you're used to in Windows 7. So I downloaded the ISO for Linux Lite 4.8. It was about one and a half gigs in size. So not a terribly big ISO. I created a virtual machine in VirtualBox to take a look at Linux Lite today. I actually went through the installation process and actually installed it in VirtualBox. And that's what I'm gonna take a look at today. Now, when you first launch Linux Lite, you are presented with a welcome greeter, a really nice, attractive greeter says Linux Lite is free for everyone to use and share, so they're promoting the free and open source nature of Linux Lite. And then it, you have three columns of stuff here. The first column says start here, and I love that it is in a different color than the other columns. You know, all the buttons are blue and you have an arrow pointing at it. This is basically saying, hey, new users, especially you new to Linux users, what do you want to do first? Well, you need to install the updates. And then you need to install drivers. This will install the third-party drivers you need for your Wi-Fi and for your graphics card. And then you need to set a restore point. So this is going to probably set up a system backup using something like TimeShift. And then it says install language support. So if you're not a English speaker, or maybe you are an English speaker, but you speak multiple languages, this would be what you need to click on to get that. And then, of course, the other columns, you have support. So this is where to go get official support from the Linux Lite team, maybe official support forums, IRC chat channels. You also have ways to contribute to the project. Maybe you want to contribute code or donate money or just shop for some neat gear that helps support the Linux Lite project. Now, after the first time you run through installing the updates and drivers and everything, if you'd never want to see this welcome greeter again, what you should do is untick this box here that says show this dialog on startup, untick that, then close it. And then now every time you log in or reboot, you won't be presented with that greeter anymore. So now that I close the greeter, let's talk about first impressions. It should be pretty obvious what is going on here. Anybody that ever used Windows, especially Windows 7, should recognize some of the colors going on here in the wallpaper, <laughs> some of the styling. It is basically that blue kind of default Windows 7 wallpaper. The only difference is they stuck the Linux Lite Feather logo in the center of the screen. And then you have a welcome message in a variety of different languages. I think this is great. They're basically really going out of their way to attract the Windows 7 user that is maybe thinking about switching to Linux. From the release announcements, remember they mentioned that you have a familiar kind of layout. You have desktop icons, so you actually have icons sitting on the desktop. Many Linux distributions don't have desktop icons, or at least they don't have it enabled by default. Many Linux users don't find the need really to have a bunch of stuff sitting on the desktop, but most Windows users are used to that because that's part of the Windows workflow. That's part of the old school Windows paradigm. So Linux Lite sticks those icons right there on the desktop. Then you have your start menu, if you will. This is the XFCE menu, and it's very familiar, very easy to navigate. This is, if you're used to using the start menu in Windows, then this should 
be easy for you to navigate. You can search by category for your apps. You can just choose all and get in a very long listing of all the apps already installed. Or if you know exactly what you're looking for, you could always just use the search. So if I'm looking for, I don't know, the terminal, you know, I can find the terminal, just hit enter once it highlights the app that I wanted. Of course, that wasn't the terminal. That was the terminal preferences. That's not exactly what I wanted. And continuing with the familiar theme for the Windows 7 users, you know, you have your standard sys tray on the right hand side. So let's take a look at what is installed by default on Linux Lite 4.8. Let's start with the accessories category. We have our application finder. We have our archive manager. Archive manager is what you would use for zip, unzip, tar, untar, that sort of thing. We have our backup. And the backup looks like, is this Deja Dupe? I think it is. That's one of the uh, snapshot utilities, one of the backup utilities that Ubuntu uses. And I'm, that's also found here in Linux Lite 4.8. Also under accessories, we have our calculator. It's just a standard calculator. It's set to basic mode by default. But if you wanted to, you could go into advanced mode for those of you that need more of a scientific kind of calculator. Also under accessories, we have our file search. We have fonts. We have our home folder now this is just our file manager really and if they're using the standard file manager for xfce this should be thunar let's see if i go to help and go to about this is thunar 1.6.15 also under accessories we have our screenshot utility and we have our text editor let's see what text editor they are using they are using leafpad so leafpad i think is one of the old lxde utilities mousepad is actually the plain text editor for the xfce desktop environment so that's interesting that they chose to go with leafpad rather than mousepad under the graphics category we have gimp now gimp is our free and open source alternative to adobe photoshop if i go to about you will see that this is gimp 2.10.14. GIMP is just a fantastic program. It's what I use to do all the artwork for my YouTube channel, and it's just great. One of the best pieces of free and open source software on the planet. Also under graphics, we have our image viewer, and we have a scanner for scanning documents. Let's see what program this is. This is Simple Scan. That may or may not actually be necessary to have on the ISO these days. Very few people have the need to scan documents anymore. Under the internet category, we have Firefox as the default web browser, and I believe this should be Firefox 71, which is, you know, the really recent version of Firefox. Yeah, Firefox 71.064 bit. Also under internet, we have our network connections, we have support, and this is where you go to get online support for Linux Lite. If we had to click the support button in that welcome greeter that we were presented with when we first logged in, it's the same thing. We also have Thunderbird Mail for our email. If you have the need for a email client, Thunderbird is already installed. Most people these days use webmail. I actually do use Thunderbird. I'm a longtime Thunderbird user. I think it's a fantastic program. Under multimedia, we have our CD, DVD burner. Let's see which program they are using. Looks like they are using XFBurn 0.5.5. Now, XFBurn is one of the XFCE utilities. Again, another utility that, that may, may be able to leave off the ISO. Very few people burn CDs or DVDs anymore, so that might be one. They could, they could have just left off the ISO. Also under multimedia, we have VLC for our media player, VLC. One of the most popular free and open source programs on the planet. This is VLC 3.0.8. Also under multimedia, we have our volume control, and this will be Pulse Audio volume control. We have an Office category, and it looks like we have LibreOffice installed. We have LibreOffice Writer, Impress, and Calc. We also have a PDF viewer. Let me open up LibreOffice Writer, which is their alternative to something like Microsoft Word. That's the free and open source <laughs> Microsoft Word. And this is LibreOffice 6.0.7.3. We also have a category here called My Computer, but this is just bookmarks for your file manager. So if I open the file manager, which is right here in this quick launch, you will see we have documents, downloads, music, pictures, public, templates, videos. It looks like this category here it's basically a lot of the same links. This is just quickly accessing some of the most common directories that you may be going to in your file manager. We have a category called settings. 
which is where you would go to edit various settings for like display hardware settings that sort of thing now you could just click this wheel here this little cog here that says all settings here at the top of the menu let me resize that and this is also all of your settings this is just in more of kind of a traditional control panel they're all located in one central window here so if you wanted to change something like the appearance you know, you could change the theming and it looks like they have all the standard XFCE themes installed. The default theme looks like it is Adapta, which is a very nice GTK theme. Back to the menu, we also have a system category. And this is where you will find some of the system tools such as installing and removing software. We have to give our root password to install remove software. It looks like it uses the Synaptic Package Manager for its graphical way of installing and removing software. I love the Synaptic Package Manager. I always install it anytime I run a Debian or an Ubuntu based distribution. It is just a fantastic piece of software. If you prefer to not install and remove software at the command line, Synaptic is probably the best way to do it. We have our NTFS configuration tool. Now, now that's interesting. That's probably geared again toward the Windows user that is looking to come over to Linux. We have a way to partition our drives. Now that may or may not be something that needs to be on the ISO after the installation. This is Gparted. Uh, it could be very dangerous for especially new users to play around with a tool like Gparted because you could format your, your hard drive with Gparted. That's what it's for. So they probably i i understand why it's on the live image but after the installation they probably really should just remove gparted if somebody needs to use gparted they can get it installed we have a program to configure our printers we also can check our system resource usage this is just launching a terminal and then launching htop in the terminal let's check it out really really low ram usage i gave this vm four gigs of ram right now we're only using 428 megs of ram and that's after i opened at least 20 or 30 programs probably in this so there's probably a lot of extra stuff still running in the background but still only using 400 megs of ram that's really nice Back to the system category, we have system information, system log, we have our task manager, and this is a graphical way to view the processes that are running, kind of a graphical way to view something similar to htop. Let me open a terminal. Now on most Ubuntu-based distros, Control-Alt-T should open a terminal, and it does here in Linux Lite. I really like that they uh, included the little power line effect here in the bash shell. That, that is a nice touch. That's something not a lot of distros actually put much thought into theming their shell prompt. I'm going to run a quick command here. I'm going to do u namespace dash r. Let's get the kernel version. They are using kernel 4.15.0-74. Now since Linux Lite is definitely light on resources, but what about the bloat? What about how many programs are installed by default? What if I run a command here that... Linux Lite uses the same package manager as Debian and Ubuntu, which is apt. If I do an apt list and then give it this flag dash dash installed, it will list out all the programs that are actually installed. Let me run that same command and this time I'm going to pipe it into WC space dash L. I'm going to get a line count is basically what we're going to get. And so that app list installed command had 1980 lines. That's how many packages are installed in Linux Lite. I would not call that lightweight. <laughs> That's pretty bloated. When you have 2000 packages installed on your system, that actually shocks me a little bit. Let's see what kind of wallpapers are installed by default here in Linux Lite. So if I right click on the desktop, and I go to desktop settings and we have a variety of wallpapers to choose from some really nice photographs pictures of cars more nature photographs and some that are just some abstract art with the Linux Lite logo which I actually kind of like these so some of these yeah I really like the Linux Lite themed ones of course that's the default one right there the Windows one and that's a nice nature photo Here's one with a really nice waterfall. And what I'm just going to go with that one for now. So that was just a quick look at the recently released Linux Lite 4.8. I think just initially my first impressions looks like a solid release. I really love that they're they're going after 
the Windows 7 users in a big way, right? They're making that hard sell right there. Hey, Windows 7 users, your operating system's not supported. It's insecure. You need to move on to something else. Give Linux Lite a try. I love that they're doing that. I am a bit of a fan of Linux Lite. So I have a lot of family and friends that'll bring me their Windows computers and they want Linux on it, you know, some form of Linux because Windows is starting to run slow. Their virus riddled laptops doesn't work anymore with Windows 7 or Windows 10. And my go to Linux distribution for these family members typically, I carry around a USB stick with Ubuntu on it. But every now and then I'll try out some other distributions on those machines, especially if for whatever reason Ubuntu doesn't work. And some of the distributions I've had great luck with on family computers where I install it and I never hear from those family members again. It just works. Linux Lite is one of those distributions. I've installed it a couple of different times on family members' computers and it just works flawlessly. I've never had a complaint about it. So if you are one of those Windows 7 holdouts out there, maybe give Linux Lite 4.8 a try. Now, before I go, this show was made possible by Chris, DJ Donnie, Dylan, George, Haplo, Nate, Corbinian, and Lambda, Michael, Mitchell, Rob, Sean, Stallman, and Willie. These guys are the producers of this show. Without these guys, this quick look at Linux Lite 4.8 wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by all those other fine ladies and gentlemen, all those names you see on the screen. Those guys help support my work over on Patreon. Without those guys, the channel wouldn't be possible. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider doing so. Just look for DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.